What's up guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. Firstly, I wanted to say thank you to all of you who have been watching my tutorial video on ripping game files for 3D printing in Chivalry Medieval Warfare. I had no idea that video would be so popular and successful, so please keep sharing around, showing people. Um, thank you so much for subscribing and checking it out. Um, I'd love to hear if you have any successes ripping those files. So I used Mesh Mixer for that tutorial video, but I didn't really do much with it. I just pretty much saved an OBJ as an STL and went from there, which is a bit of a shame because Mesh Mixer has to be by far one of the most kick-ass bits of free software I have ever used. It's gone from something which was pretty obscure and artistic to what is now essentially a hardcore bit of 3D printing kit. So what I thought I'd do is show you 10 awesome ways you can use Mesh Mixer for your 3D printing adventures. Alrighty, let's get started. So fire up Mesh Mixer. And the way I'm going to do this is I'll demonstrate a problem and a solution using Mesh Mixer. So here I've got an STL file. This is a file of Mr. Clicky. He's a little like doll I designed a couple of years ago. You can get him from Thingiverse. And this is the file that you'll get. So this is designed for SLS printing. So it's nested together, uh, makes the quote cheaper, and everyone's happy. But for FDM printing, it's not really suitable. For example, what if my bed's only this big? Or I might want to rearrange them or scale them differently. Well, Mesh Mixer is coming to the rescue. Go to Edit and Separate Shells. So separating shells will break apart all these individual components from the one STL file. And you can then go and save them individually, just like that. So the next thing uh, goes hand in hand with separating shells, and that's combining. So it's pretty much as straightforward as it sounds. Currently, we've got all these separate parts. I'll hold down Shift to select them all, and then combine. So exact opposite of separating shells, it's now combining them all into the one file and I can export that. So it's very handy if you want to send lots of nested components to someone. For example, if you are sending to SLS, you can nest them and then save as the one STL. But you do have to be careful that there's no intersections or touching parts because uh, combine won't combine the shells. It won't make a Boolean uniform mesh. It will have them intersecting, which is nasty for printing. Sometimes you'll want to combine a lot of files, like this is a, but a taste of what I've had to do in the past. I've had to combine more than 250 separate STL files together. And Mesh Mixer doesn't let you bring in more than one at a time usually. You can't hold down shift or control or whatever to select more. You have to do one at a time, which is a real pain in the ass. So what I found out is a workaround to sort of get around this. And it's pretty simple. I'll just... Uh, close Mesh Mixer, open it again so it's fresh. I'll open up the folder where my uh, all of my STL files are and I'll just collect them all and pull them in like that. So this forces Mesh Mixer to open them all at once without having to do one by one and because these are all saved from an assembly they all remember their datum point and they'll all be exactly where I want them. Like so. Okay, so if you're on a 3D printer, you would have come across this problem. You want to print something that's bigger than your build bed. Now, I'm not here to judge on how big you can print on your 3D printer, but luckily there's a very simple solution to this, and it's called Plain Cut. So, Plain Cut is as simple as it sounds. It's just a plane that will slice your file into two or more pieces. It's very easy to use and position in Mesh Mixer. Uh, you want to change cut to slice, and I always tick hard edge. I don't know if it actually does anything, but I want that plain cut area to be nice and flat for when I glue the pieces together again. So, got that where I want it, except, and then separate shells. This is a Thingiverse file, so it's got some erroneous shells, but here we go. They're the two main ones, and you can save these and whatever you like them to the maximum build area and stick your massive shark together. So that's plain cut. Okay, so this next thing is pretty much what Mesh Mixer got its name from. I want to combine two different STL files together and it's very easy to do. So I've got a splash here. I'll go to amend and grab the shark and I want to position the shark in the splash so I go to transform 
The controls for transforming files in Mesh Mixer are very easy to use. Lower them down, move them into place. Looks pretty good to me. I'll accept that. I'll select both, hold down Shift or Control. And you want to use what's called Boolean Union. So Boolean Union, accept. Now it's combined these two meshes into the one. So when I go to print this, the printer won't freak out and it'll be all good. So that's Boolean Union in Mesh Mixer. This shark looks pretty good and this is one of my one dislikes of Mesh Mixer. It rounds off STL files. And to demonstrate this, I will turn the wireframe view on. So toggle wireframe. Those triangles are pretty damn big. And when you print it, you will see facets on this shark, especially if you print it very large. So there is a way to smooth out, to a degree, these facets. So go to select. I will use the sphere brush. I'll make it a bit bigger to select the fin like that. Go a bit of the splash, but that should be OK. And then edit, remesh. So the remeshing tool is a bit hard to use, and that's because by definition, you're rounding things over, so sharp edges become rounded. But if we turn the triangle count up, you can see that that fin is now far smoother than the other one. It has rounded the points out, which might not be what you want, but because you can select only the areas you want to remesh and then do it, with a bit of care, you can actually keep the sharp edges and round over the bits you want smooth. And so I'll go accept and clear selection. And that's remeshing in Mesh Mixer. Okay, so carrying on with our shark. If I wanted to print this on my FDM printer, there may be a few things that you notice here that might not work very well. Namely the fins, they're very thin. And if you FDM print thin things, either they'll be very thin and fail, or the machine might just completely ignore those features and they just won't print at all. So this is where Mesh Mixer starts to really blow me away. And it has this feature which allows you to thicken up intelligently a mesh to a minimum thickness. So I'll just go back and show you how I got here. So it has this new print sub menu. And this is since Autodesk took over. So you can plug it into your MakerBot or whatever. It will change the bed size to suit, you know, all these different printer presets. But what I'm really interested in is the thickening. So I'll zoom in here, and I'll say, okay, I want the, th the thinnest feature to be two millimeters. Let's go with that, and fix. All right, so basically two millimeters might have been a bit too much, but it's done an amazingly good job. So that fin is far thicker now. It would print no problem at all. I could probably go 1.5 mil that would probably be safe. But for a free bit of software, the ability to thicken up thin features on STL intelligently, see it hasn't done anything to the rest of the shark, it's only done the thin edges that would probably fail, is just awesome. So we've got that done. You could then send it to MakeAware if you've got an, uh, a replicator or whatever, but it's easy just to export it as an STL and send it to your favorite bit of printing software. Say you wanted to send this file to SLS for printing. SLS is a powder-based process, and like all 3D printing processes, it's essentially just time and material for your costs. So this shark will be full of powder, and whether that's sintered or not, they're going to charge you for it, so it's going to cost quite a lot. But thanks to the Hollow tool, Mesh Mixer can save you a lot of dough, and this is how it works. So the Hollow tool offsets the mesh inside the shape to create a thin wall all around it, which is good but that inside powder would still be trapped. Not so, you can generate holes using this tool. So I'll just move a hole here, and maybe a hole you know, here, oh, I'll put them both in the bottom. And I'll make them big, three mil, and then I'll accept. And what that has done is, is completely hollowed out our shark and left two escape holes for pouring the loose powder out. And it's one of it's this is another one of those tools that just blows me away for a free bit of software. That alone would probably save you like 50 bucks 
in powder that you didn't need because all you need for SLS is the outside of the shape. So yeah, that's the hollow tool. Definitely take advantage of that. The next thing I'm going to talk about is support material. Mesh Mixer has a very unusual way of generating support material, which is very unique. It's actually a little bit like SLA support material in the way that it only has very small contact points. And the idea is it makes it easy to pull away. Personally, I haven't used it that much, mostly because I run up machines and only a few other printers and the ups force you to use their own support material, which is very, very good, but it doesn't let you use Mesh Mixer support material. So again, very easy to use in the printer sub menu. You just add support structure. Um, I haven't orientated this any, any way correctly. Usually I'll probably do it with the base down, but this is just to show how it works. It shows where it's going to generate it. Uh, it's got a few defaults. Let's try the two mil default for replicator and support all overhangs. And yeah, so that's the sort of support material it makes. It's like a weird tree with very tiny contact points on the actual printed surfaces. Um, again, I haven't had much success with it, mostly because my printer tends to knock the little branches over before they get to the actual support bit, so it ends up just being nothing and then, oh, I'm trying to support myself. But um, I have heard amazing things online of people using this for their printers. So definitely give it a go if you, if you can turn support off on your printer because the way this works is you build it into your file rather than adding support at the printer end. Okay, so the last tool I'm going to talk about is the sculpting tool. Um, I've only barely scratched the surface on the tools you can use in Mesh Mixer for your 3D printing, but the sculpting tool is uh, pretty much a full featured freeform modeling suite within Mesh Mixer. Uh, I can't draw a straight line, let alone 3D model in 3D with freeform tools. So I don't really use it, but I'm sure all you sort of artistic guys out there, guys and girls, would find this very useful. So it gives you brushes. If everyone's used Sculptress, it's very similar to Sculptress in the way it works. So I'll select drag. I'll make the size a bit bigger. And then you can pretty much push and pull the mesh. It will add triangles as it needs them. So remember, this is a pretty low polygon count uh, model. Yeah, definitely give it a go. It's quite fun. Um, and it'll probably let you do you know very easy modifications to to your STL files before printing. So that's Mesh Mixer. I hope I did this awesome program justice. I can't thank Autodesk enough for the support they've given the 3D printing and maker community. It's absolutely amazing that they've made these bits of software free and like freely available and there's just I don't know out of words. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys for subscribing and watching. Um, really appreciate it. Feel free to tell me in the comments uh, other things that you might use Mesh Mixer for, or also uh, let me know you know other videos that I could do in the future that might help you. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, have a great night or day, whatever time it is there. It's night time here in Perth, and I'll see you around. Thanks, guys. Bye.